Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game Tentacom video, we're going to be discussing Capsation, more specifically focusing on the Vega reveals, and we're also going to touch on some stuff regarding Ryzen, but we'll get to that last. So, Capsation has been and gone. So, first of all, I want to get this right out of the way, and yes, it's probably going to make a lot of you click off the video, AMD have not launched the product. That's right, it's simply a features demonstration of capsation as well as the actual reveal of the name. We'll get into that in just a second. Now, I'm sure many of you were disappointed that more stuff wasn't shown off. Specifically, I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get more information regarding the performance and the whole SKU lineup as a whole. What we did get is a reminder, I guess you could say, of the technology that actually inside Vega. And it is worth watching the Capsation stream, or should I say the archive of it, which will be put, I'm assuming, on the AMD channel in a couple of hours. The videos you're going to be seeing here are from the live stream, hence the quality is not exactly up to par. But unfortunately, sometimes the stream is dropping out just simply because the you know servers was kind of getting hammered. So, we already know about some of the stuff regarding Vega architecture. I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Now, Raja Kodori spoke about the high bandwidth cache controller and how it affects the performance in DLSX and Mankind Divided. So basically, he almost had a side-by-side -side comparison, and essentially, he claims that with the demo that they set up, which, as far as I can understand from what he explained, please correct me in the comments or message me on Facebook, from what I understood, it seemed that he basically had crippled one of the... he'd crippled the cards to be half the amount of RAM. So in, set, in short, the game requires four gigabytes. That's what DLSX Sex Mankind Divided requires for like the highest end settings, right? Okay, that's simple. What they did is they basically crippled the card, I'm assuming via software, uh, down to just two gigabytes. And then basically they ran HBCC on or HBCC off. And the difference was that it improved performance by 50% on average and 100% on minimum frame rates. That's right, twice the performance. Now, I'm going to make the assumption this is just simply because of the better memory control that we're getting. And we did have quite a exclusive interview with Scott Wasson from AMD, and he did explain how this works um, to a quite in-depth degree, so I don't want to repeat over what he said because I'll just be treading over old ground, but basically it's fine-grained control. So data is essentially being pulled out from system memory or the hard drive or what have you as and when it's required. This means that the GPU has a much better way of allocating memory, and on top of that as well, HBCC much better allocates memory based upon what it really needs for a specific title. And Rajar himself pointed out that some games are really bad at memory allocation. And oftentimes you're only utilising actually 25% of the memory that's on your GPU. As I said, you should check out the Scott Wasson video if you want more information on that. Now, Rapid Pack Math was another thing that was shown, and it basically doubled the strands per second. Now, the demo was utilising TressFX, which, full disclosure, well, I say disclosure, it's not a bad thing, we've already covered on the channel previously. So, TressFX is, of course, AMD's solution for rendering hair, fur, grass, and other such things. It's basically organic. Now, what they did with Rapid Pack Math is to utilise the ability of and leverage the GPU to being able to uh, pull out um, half-float operations at much faster rates. Uh, Raja Kodori did kind of illustrate this by saying that if you're paying for 64 compute units, which might have been a bit of a slip of the tongue to once again confirm that 64 is the high-end Vega part, we'll get to that in just a second, that you're essentially paying for 128 if the software is utilising this technology, which is really the crux of the matter. Essentially, it does come down to de games developers to utilise this, and if they're not, well, there you go. But if it is... In the case of this particular TressFX demo, you're basically utilising half precision, which is FP16, rather than a 32-bit 32 32-bit 32 float. For those who are not familiar with Floating Point, I have gone into this exhaustively before, uh, especially in the PS4 Pro video, the Pro Analysis, but basically it simply means that it's less precise. You basically have less numbers of precision. So it's almost the equivalent of me saying to you, well, 1.0542, uh, 
And but if I was to remove a number from that and let's say zero point, uh, sorry, one point five two, or one point five, it's suddenly less and less precise. It's almost the equivalent of me saying, "Well, you owe me a hundred, you know, you owe me a hundred or one thousand pounds," when it might be you owe me one thousand two hundred. But I'm just simply rounding it up to a single figure. It's basically less precise. The reason behind that, at least in this technology, is that it means that you can deal with more. Um, operations at once it's basically packing them together and it's essentially rendering them uh, uh executing them simultaneously two operations of half bit in other words uh, fp16s could be rendered i'm sorry executed as fp32 in other words a full float in the same period of time i am vastly simplifying it for this video because it's kind of an in-depth topic now vega itself is going to be available for millions of users on launch day now they're going to be doing this a very similar technology to GeForce Now. Essentially, it's going to be cloud streaming using what they call the Radeon Virtualized Encoder, and this is combined with Liquid Sky. Now, we're not quite sure how the pricing structure is going to work, although they did say that if you interact with advertising with Liquid Sky, it will be free, although I'm not quite sure how that works, what time periods you get or anything like that. Um, they've not really elaborated. But with this technology, you can stream, for example, using, oh, I don't know, like a tablet, which could be kind of cool. It also might be nice if you're not a particularly hardcore PC gamer. And let's say, for sake of argument, you're typically a PS4 gamer or an Xbox gamer, and there is one or two PC games that you really want to play a high resolution, then by golly gosh means you could do that. It also could be kind of cool if you're for example, trying to dip your fingers into the 4K, you could say, okay, well, do I really want to pay and upgrade with this? In other words, it could be like a side way of doing it. Or conversely, you might decide, well, you know what? I'm traveling to a business meeting. I'm on this train or bus or whatever. I feel like pewing something in the face and, you know, I really am getting sick and tired of Temple Run 3000. There might be that as well. However, let's talk about the name. Well, this one's nice and confusing, and by nice and confusing, I mean, well, it's really confusing to the point I'm not even sure how to begin to explain it, because the name of the new Vega cards is not going to be the 490, it's not going to be the 590, so, you know, screw your search engine optimization websites, no, it's going to be called the Radeon RX Vega. Oh, you are waiting for something else? Well, so was I, but no, that's pretty much it, the Radeon RX Vega. So, this kind of confuses me, to be honest, and I'm sure that these questions are going to be answered pretty soon, because immediately there's like, okay, does that mean it's only going to be Fury? Like, the equivalent of Fury? Because the rumours are, and I don't want to go into the whole rumour of Mill, like, for the oomph time, but basically the rumours are that Vega is going to be a product line, and... The thing with Rajar said, and this is the thing that confused me further, is he said that he wants to make Vega cheap. Like One of the whole purposes of Vega is to bring down the product costs, and that basically goes hand in hand with Polaris, right? Okay, fair enough. The problem with that, well not the problem, but the thing that's confusing about that, is that, well, quite frankly speaking, I'm bamboozled. I'm bamboozled a lot, because... If you've got, let's say, multiple, let's say you've got the Vega 11, Vega 10. Vega 11 was supposed to be the lower-end SKUs. Vega 10 was supposed to be the high-end SKUs. In other words, the Furies. How does this work? And even the Fury, you've got the Fury and you've got the Fury X. Essentially, very similar cards. They've both got HBM1, but obviously one has higher number of compute units and all that stuff. How that works, I just don't know. I don't know. So we're going to have to wait. I'm kind of confused on how... They're going to um, elaborate on that naming. I've got to say, though, very off topic, at least in my opinion, the logo is gosh darn spiffy. Although the... I can't actually think of the technical term for them, so I'm just going to call them elongated triangles because my brain is fried today, if I'm totally honest. But those... That logo looks really similar to something else, and I cannot bloody well place it. So if someone can me mention that to me on Facebook, that would be bloody appreciated. Because honestly, it looks like a robot design or something I've seen before, and I cannot quite place where I've seen it. It's really bugging the hell out of me. Anyway, I think that's about it for the Ryzen stuff. Yes, there was a crap ton of other stuff mentioned at Cap Capsation. For example, the fact that they are doing a collaboration with Bethesda. 
Now, just to clarify, that is not going to be marketing, at least from what Raja has told us. This is going to be from the ground up. So we're going to see titles which are optimized for the Radeon and the Ryzen platform. What this means in reality, I just don't know. But it's probably going to mean, and I'm making an assumption here, not reality. It's probably going to mean that we're going to see much more optimization like we saw with Doom 4 or Doom, whatever you want to call it. Where, of course, we saw Vega being highly utilized. I'm sorry, not Vega. Where we saw Vulcan being highly utilized. And we saw it running across much better across multiple cores. And Rajar made this kind of joke where he said internally AMD now are saying that four, the 8 is the new 4. Obviously a bit of a reference to the number of cores. In other words, saying that 4 cores is kind of old now. 8 cores is where it's at. And obviously with modern APIs and modern game engines being wrote from the ground up. Like we saw the guys from Oxide on stage. And they were basically confirming that new games, new modern engines which are wrote from the ground up. Specifically with the idea of supporting modern apps. In other words, you know... DirectX 12 and Vulkan, their performance, their scaling across cores goes up massively. Um, whereas I believe they said that actually the singularity in, in its ilk hit about 70%, 80% across multiple cores. That's CPU usage. With the modern one, you can get up to like 90 to 100%, which is really impressive. Anyway, I am somewhat waxing lyrically, and there is a lot of other stuff we could go through in Capsation, but frankly, I don't know if I will because a lot of it was to do with virtual reality. But if you're interested in that, you know, we can go through it. Let me know. Let me know on Facebook or Twitter or whatever you want to do. But I do want to talk briefly about Ryzen. There are a few other Ryzen rumours. Quite frankly, it's quite late here in the UK. And I'm very tired. I've had a very, very, very long day today. Um, and I know that's a crappy excuse, but unfortunately... Paul wants to do X, body and brain are telling me no, so there's limitations, which kind of suck, but anyway. So anyway, I don't know why I keep saying anyway, that's a sure sign that I'm tired. Um, the Ryzen 7 1800X has been overclocked to 4 GHz across all 8 cores. Now this comes to us from the Chinese forum Chip Hell. I want to emphasise this is not an official benchmark, this is not something that someone's created in, you know, on YouTube. This is not something where, you know, someone has uh, been verified. This is just, you know, some random dude on the internet. So it's up to you if you decide to believe that this is accurate and genuine. Regardless, uh, there was no mention of the cooler used, which is a bit of a shame, but it does appear that a 4 gigahertz is likely achievable. This is based upon all the information we've heard before. AMD um, I'm sorry, Overclockers UK confirmed that they've hit 4, uh, 4 gigahertz quite comfortably on the 1700, let alone the 1800X. So, yeah, I'm going to assume that this is quite comfortable. And you're looking at around 8%-ish performance boost, which is not shabby. That's pretty much spitting distance of the 6950X. Bear in mind, just for clarification's sake, the 6950X costs, well, three times more. So that's pretty damn nice. There are some other rumours as well um, that are swirling around. But to be honest now, we're so close to March the 2nd. It's looking like we should be okay for our samples. From what I can understand from the shipping manifest that I'm reading, the cooler has been dispatched. That was a bitch, by the way, just for your FYI. I'm going to warn you, uh, this is completely off topic. So if you're done with the video, you know, the, all the technical stuff, you can by all means skip out the video and thanks for watching. Just as a warning uh, on the cooler side of things, they are a fucking bitch. Excuse the language, but seriously, um, I just want to warn you. Some companies, some shops, I'm not going to mention names because I don't want to, you know, get in trouble. But some are reporting that they are selling AM4 compatible coolers. That is technically true insofar as to say that you know, if I was to sell you, I don't know, a hundred pounds motherboard, it is compatible with, I don't know, a 7700K. It just doesn't come with the clamp. In other words, you have to either send off to the mother, um, the AIO manufacturer separately, or you have to buy it from them. And not all of them are doing this. A couple of retailers are good. They are doing it. Like, we're all, and I'm not advocating a company here. I just want to stress this. 
we are ordering from Overclockers UK with our cooler, and I can't remember the exact model that we got, went with because Amy bought it because I was at work at the time, so sorry about that. But basically, we bought one, and there's only a few left. So the coolers for these things aren't the issue. It's the actual clamps, which are being a pain in the asshole. Now, from what I can understand, and I was speaking to a couple of other folks on Facebook about this, if you happen to have a cooler already that supports, or well, technically can support, let's say on the Corsair lineup, if you already have that cooler, you can buy the or get sent for free the clamp, depending on the company you're going with, which basically adheres the cooler to the motherboard. However, in many cases, you're going to have to provide proof that you've bought Ryzen. So that's just something I wanted to bring to your attention if you are thinking of buying it, because, you know, I just don't want you to be basically be screwed. Um, and that's about it. Aside from that, the motherboard, the processor, looks like they're going to ship. Um, and so that's a good thing. Apparently, it's going to arrive on March the 2nd, so... We should have Ryzen. So, yeah, that should be cool. Anyway, I am going to let you all go. As I said, it's been a bit of a hickledy pickledy day today. I'm really sorry. I'm just pretty tired, so it's not going to be quite up to my usual standards, but I want to put this up anyway. Over the next couple of days, we will be absolutely ridiculously busy. However, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. And I know I've not messaged many of you back on Facebook the last couple of days. It's just because insane busy levels like Tuesday and Wednesday for me are literally evil. So, um, I shall be back as normal. But with all of that said, thank you all for the support. I will see you soon, because, you know, we are pretty consistent here. And uh, once again, thanks for all the support. The messages means an awful lot to us. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.